Okay, in the last tutorial you recall that we had built a black mask over the entire flower which in, then in turn maps that portion of the primary image down onto the background. Um, just to um, refresh things, if I turn the filter on and draw you can see that the flower does in fact map down onto the background. One of the things you might notice here is that it's mapping pink in this area and that's because it's actually it actually overlays onto the background in the overlay mode. And here's where the hard mix comes into play. If we switch this to the hard mix, you'll see that now it's mapping the white portion down. And only area that's mapping pink is the hole through where this petal uh, laps over and you can see through it. But where there is white on the petals, it's now mapping through as white. And that's the real benefit to using hard mix, is that you're getting the exact uh, image from the um, from the primary being mapped down onto the onto the background. That of course only really is a benefit when the background uh, matches the background of the primary image as well. Um, anyway, we'll proceed here on to uh, drawing, turning off the pixels, and uh, and then we'll draw the new lines. Um, and again, there there we have the uh, the mask has been drawn. Now we're going to move on to doing the uh, lettering. First thing we'll do is pick a new dot group and um, and pick a line width that's just a little bit wider than a pixel. I'll pick the two pixel wide line because what I want to do is I want to trace down but I want to make sure that I have a line that's wide enough to cover over the stroke of the um, of a letter but not so wide that it allows a significant portion of this cross stroke to bleed through. So what I'll do is map down here and with a narrow line it's fairly important that you stay close to being dead on to the line that you're uh, trying to color in and that will work there. Now as we go to this sweeping area of the of the letter we could pick a wider line so I'll pick a pretty good size wide line here. Oop, didn't start a new dot group as you can see so let's erase that last group or last dot rather and we'll start a new dot group this time with this wider line and march it along here. You probably notice that I'm putting the dots a little closer together when I'm drawing a letter and that's because the hand scripting would probably go a little slower than it would if you were um, doing a freehand sketch. And here we'll just draw that to there again get a new dot group. Since this, there's no major intersections here I can stick with the wide line and I'll just trace around the uh, cursive L here filling this whole thing in going out here to where we get to the O back tracing going across that area there will will show the the intersection is it but it paints so fast that you probably won't even notice it in the final AVI uh, same with where this E is. There's just a few dots, which means a few a tenth of a second or so before the whole thing is filled in. Keeping in mind that each dot represents a um, a single frame in an AVI, and at 30 frames a second, 30 dots makes one second. So there you have it. We filled in the whole word flowers. Now if you wanted to take a look at it, turn the filters on and you can see that flowers has in fact been filled in. Uh, drawing the primary, turning the filters off and redrawing. We'll now pick a uh, another new dot group and go down here and color in nature's. I chose a slightly smaller brush size only because the font here is smaller. But I'll just go along and color in this wording just like we did before. Go up here and start this A and go through here up to about right there. Now I'm going to have to pick a new dot group and go down in size a bit because of this intersection. We'll go up to there and then back down and continue following around here with this. That slightly missed so I'm going to erase that dot. We'll go in here and follow up on the U. Up to the R. Across there. Follow the E. 
Let's stop the E right about there. Get a new dot group and we'll go up and draw the apostrophe. Now get a new dot group and come back here and finish out the S. Notice I'm trying to do this the way you would do it if you were doing it with your scripted hand. A uh, new dot group for crossing the T. I'm going to pick a slightly larger line width and go across there. I can probably keep that same line width going into this gift because there's not many intersections, at least not early on in the, in the scripting of the gift of the G. So we come along here drawing our G and then back down to here and we're running into an intersection here. I'll pick a new dot group and a slightly smaller line width to gap across that. And then I can go to a bigger dot group again if I want and finish out the uh, lower portion of the uh, G script. Come up here, I'll just continue on and catch the eye. Probably at that intersection I'm going to want a really uh, smaller dot line with also because there's a very busy intersection right here with lots of things crossing each other. So we'll come back down that sweep of the F until we get to the end of that. Then a new dot group, I would think that the, uh, the script probably again starts up here on the T. It comes down as such. And then a new dot group with uh, maybe a bigger line this time and we'll dot the I. We'll cross the F and a new dot group again. We'll go up here and we'll cross the T. Now, if we draw the background, turn the filters on, and you'll see that we have, in fact, scripted out the entire uh, message. But you don't really want things to stop there. And why would be, well, suppose that you had a, um, a brown pencil, and now you redrew all of this. You'd see that the pencil... Well, I have to turn the filters on, but anyway, you'd see that the pencil stopped right at the end of the T, and that would be the last AVI in the uh, animation, so your pencil would just be stuck there. Um, we can fix that very easily, though, by just going back to where we were and continuing this dot pattern on until we take it nice and smoothly off the edge of the page, and we make the last dot be right at the edge of the page. Now, if you draw the background, turn the filters on, and draw the lines, you'll see that the pen has marked, or the pencil has marched off of the side of the page, and you've got your final animation. This is what you would then use for building your bitmaps and building your AVI. Uh, there's going to be several thousand, a couple thousand, actually about 2,500, I would guess, uh, dots that are going to make up this entire uh, AVI, AVI animation, so that this thing will play in the course of oh. 60 seconds or so to draw it, about a minute or so. Um, so that will complete this particular uh, series of uh, tutorials. I hope that uh, you can see how very complex drawings can be made relatively simply if you just take your time and plan your work uh, in VisiSketch Pro.